Now that we know a good many uh, sine values for different radian measures or degrees going around, uh, for example, we know the sine of 0 is 0, the sine of 45 degrees or pi over 4 radians is square root of 2 over 2 or about 0.7 and so on, then you could plot the points on this and if you connect the points with a curve, you would get something that looks like this and that's called a sine wave. It goes out here to 2 pi before it starts repeating and the distance that it, the curve goes before it starts repeating is called, it, called its period. So the period of the sine wave, just y equals sine of theta. Theta is a variable that's often used instead of x and you'll see that here um, later on in the course but uh, I'll show you here real quick what, the, what theta looks like. Let me just click somewhere and uh, get that. Let me go to uh, equation area so you can see what theta looks like. Theta looks like this symbol right here and lots of times people use this symbol for the angle measurement or degrees radians either one and you don't have to but uh, you could always use x or whatever but the period is uh, 2 pi and what we can do is graph sine functions and actually all the trig functions right here on this trick sheet. When you put in your A, B, C, and D, it's going to put in the values for the A, the number in front of the sign, the B, the number in, uh, in the parentheses that's before the variable, and the C, the constant inside the parentheses, and the D, the constant at the end. And not only will it graph the sign by putting in your A, B, C, and D here, but it also graphs three other ones in this area, the cosine, the secant, and also the uh, cosecant. Now, there's only two left, and that's the tangent and cotangent, and they're graphed over in this area right here. And when you put in your A, B, C, and D right here, it affects the graph of the tangent and the cotangent in this area. Now, uh, the graph of sine, I would just say put in one for the A, and I also need one in for the B. If I don't have that, then I don't have an X. So I need one sine of X is what I need there. And that graph, you can see, goes from 0 to 2 pi. You can adjust because 2 pi is about 6.28. And uh, we can see that it ends right about there. Now, I, what I did is I made my start in the end. This affects the start and end of all these four graphs here. I made the start 0, and I made the end equals 2 times pi. And hit enter and that's how I graphed it. Now, it tells you a ton of things right here. It tells you that the amplitude is one. Uh, the amplitude is one. Uh, the amplitude isn't quite what you think. Um, let me go down here and this explains what each of these are. Uh, amplitude it does deal with how high and low it goes, but really to get the amplitude, um, right here. It's the high, how high the graph is, the maximum height minus the minimum, the minimum height divided by 2. And in this case, the one that we're dealing with, it is 1 because 1 plus, here's this one, negative 1. So 1 minus a negative 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the amplitude is 1. This is the period right here calculated. Here's the period in decimal form. Uh, phase shifting, that's shifting the graph right or left is uh, right here and here's the interval that contains one cycle and here's it is in decimal. Now if you ever use these for further calculations like you would like to see uh, one interval of this then down here instead of me typing in 2 pi I could do equals and click on the decimal answer not anything with a pi in it. So I could go right here click on this and boom I got the uh, the interval right there. I could also see this graph over a longer period. I could maybe do equals, let's do 5 times 2 pi, which is right here. Again, click on this, not this. So right here, and hit enter. And now I'll get the graph of this over a uh, 10 pi distance. And so you can see it just repeats like this. So it's like a sound wave, but it's called a sine wave. And uh, we'll do another more complicated one here. Let's go ahead and graph this one. Y equals 2 sine of 3x plus pi over 4 plus 1. You go to the trick sheet and put in these coefficients of, three, of 2, 3. Right here is I typed in equals pi, open parentheses, close parentheses, divide by 4. And then it's been moved up one unit. It tells you that the amplitude is 2. The period is 2 pi over 3. You actually get the period by taking the standard period, 2 pi, divided by the uh, b. 3, so it would be 2 pi over 3. The phase shift is negative pi over 12. That means that this graph has been shifted to the left, pi over 12. You can get the phase shift by taking 2 
uh, two, by setting your bx plus c, which in this case is 3x plus pi over 4, equal to 0, and solving it. And that will tell you what the phase shift is. Let's go ahead and do this problem on the Excel sheet. Here's some of my coefficients in, 2, 3, then there was a equals pi uh, over 4, and there was a 1 right here. And let's look at this over just the length of this period. You can see that its period is 2 pi over 3, its amplitude is 2. So let's just graph this from, uh, let's graph one cycle of this, in fact. Let's graph it from right here, which is negative pi over 12. So here I'll do equals, and I'll click on the decimal answer to what negative pi over 12 is, to right here, uh, the uh, 7 pi over 12. So here's uh, those values in negative pi over 12 to 7 pi over 12, and then the graph is right here for that one period length right there. And you can see it's been shifted to the left, negative pi over 12, and from here to here is a distance of 2 pi over 3. It goes as high as 2 and as low as negative 1, and if you take 3 minus a negative 1 and divide by 2, you will get an amplitude of 2. But not only is that graph for you, but so is the cosine graph over that region uh, for that same function and the secant and the cosecant, and we'll go over those on the next section.